So I know conservatives love to use stories in order to uh, explain their theories. Um, stories are a very powerful way of educating people, and stories are probably the basic unit of human understanding. But there's a problem with using stories, especially the one you used, and that is that it leaves out a lot of the factors. It's not mathematically accurate. Now, let's take this example you had of people going to a bar, and let's say instead that we're talking about a situation in which there are investors in an infrastructure. Let's say a number of people own a company and they're investing in the company in order to increase productivity. All right? Now, investing in the productivity will boost the output. Now, the question becomes, who gets the benefit of that increased productivity, all right? And from that, based upon that, who should be paying more for the investment in the infrastructure? Well, what we find is that over the past three decades is that the increases in productivity have not been going to labor, it's been going to the wealthy, okay? There's been a pressure on um, wages that has made it such that the increases in productivity that have occurred over the past three decades, all of that has gone to the wealthy. So the investments in infrastructure that have been taking place, and our government certainly invests in infrastructure, in roads, transportation, court system, legal system, police, fire, you name it. There's a lot of infrastructure that makes United States productive, makes business productive, okay? And the increases in productivity have gone mostly to the very, very wealthy, the shareholders, the CEO class, okay? The wealthiest people have benefited from the increases in productivity. And because of the pressure on wages, the labor class has seen none of that, none of that. So if you're talking about fairness, we should tax people more, who benefit more from the system who benefit more from the investment to infrastructure, the investment in education, the investment in transportation, all those investments in infrastructure that make, make business more productive, which increase profits. If those profits aren't shared with labor, then labor, in my opinion, is not, um, does not have the same obligation to contribute to those investments. Therefore, a progressive tax structure makes a lot of sense, should be more progressive the more the wealthy benefit from increases in productivity, the more they should pay in taxes, okay? So that's calculating more of the math. The complete math is, uh, is in reality far more complex, but I just wanted to introduce that factor to let you know that the math is not as simple as what you're presenting here. There are other factors that need to be taken into account, all right? That's not just everyone benefits the same from taxes and that we do this out of charity, okay? That's there's also to be taken into consideration the benefits that people derive from the government. And the wealthy have been deriving increasingly more and more benefit, particularly in terms of the way they've been able to put pressure on keeping wages low and to uh, take all the profits due to productivity for themselves. Okay? So they benefit the most from the system the way it is. Okay? They should be under obligation to pay more. So that's all I'm going to say for now. Thanks.